always say thank you for inviting me. Uh, I've been a tech geek all my life. And just a bit about AI. AI is nothing but uh, machine learning. The machine picks up. Like you will say, people who have OSA will hire chance of accidents, but AI will say people who don't wear uh, seat belts will have higher chance of STDs. So it's because of the data from health and traffic accidents. So next time somebody doesn't wear a health, uh, seat belt next to you, remind them they have higher chance of STDs. So, so uh, this talk is very close to my heart. I'll just start uh, quickly. Uh, a small uh, there's so much information packed and I really don't want to go on this because it's already on the internet. But you can take pictures and that will be very useful to get your cell phones out. Uh, uh, in, because a lot of new things are coming uh, in this. Did you get it? So talking about tech. It's a tech failure from the beginning. of everyone's life is, how do I live my life to the fullest, happy, healthy, and reaching my full potential? And the answer is always very simple. Exercise for your body and mind, nutrition, and the last part we forget is sleep, actually. And when you look at the ASM new literature, it says all the people who live more than 100 years, they have more than 7.5 hours of uh, sleep. And that's a Chinese study, so yeah, take it to the pinch. How do I quantify sleep? It's an enigmatic question and everybody tries to put it. Is it the question is the spouse or the family version, the PSG. And what are the parameters you want to use it? Is it uh, desaturation, AHI, sleep fragmentation, sleep architecture, what is it? And finally, you know, the answer is something like this. This is a classical Indian thali. You have so many dishes it. And how do you feel eating this? After a while, you feel disgusting, overwhelming. I cannot finish this. I hate food. But it does have a lot of things, a lot of things. And that's what a level one PSG gives you. It gives you a data which you cannot fully understand. Neither the neurologist, neither the pulmonologist, or the EMT. Actually, they all three have to sit together to understand a PSG. But a simple meal is good enough for you for most of the people. And this has like, a sleep architecture, oxygen level, heart rate, you know, what is happening, your apnea movements, and that's good enough. And that will be good enough to make your most clinical decisions. Can variables do it? Yes. My journey began with this mysterious patient who had bleeding anywhere in the body, spontaneously, eyes, hands, nose, everywhere, suddenly disappears. National Geographic did a program on this, and these were very mysterious kids who would bleed anywhere in the body. And we didn't know how to treat them because when you admit even for a month, and they were extensively worked up in Ames, Vellore, and big institutes, how do you see when are they going to bleed? So at that time in 2010, there was only one company called Basis which is making a tracking watch. And that was a time when Fitbit, none of these companies were not even existing. And I bought this watch to track these children, what happens to them while they're bleeding. And my God, the data was amazing. And this, like a bleeding episode between 323 uh, to 454, I could see the perspiration is increasing, the heart rate is increasing, the sweat is more. So many changes are there which are physiological, which are happening. And I got really excited with these variables. Now, because we could cure this and figure out that it was a hyperhidrosis or a hemohydrosis, and simple. Uh, Propanolol was a curative drug. We had another 10 of these patients, uh, patients from all over the world, and suddenly I became a witch doctor. So, now to understand the concept of variables, it is divided into two parts. There are more than 250 gadgets, and I was trying to classify them. But this is a simple way variable, non variable, something which you put on the table, and there are apps. And these apps are one of the most powerful. Uh, 
gadgets. I'm putting it as a gadget rather than actually a software. You will know the reason why. And how does it work? It has a photoplethysmo sensor, it has ECG, EEG sensor, a actigraphy sensor, a temperature sensor, a skin conductive oximeter. This is like a basic health related sensor. Overall, a Garmin will have more than 20 sensors, altitude, barometer, and so many others. But it uses artificial intelligence to take this data and give other data like respiratory rate, sleep stages. It can tell you you have COVID or not. It can tell you serum potassium levels, so much more. Just from these primitive data. And variables in the most simplest form is a ring, aura ring, your version 3 now. There's an Indian company in Bangalore which makes this. And it will give you sleep stages, heart rate variability, so much more data. Not very expensive. And there are really good ones, Biostrap, which will actually give you conductance. Uh, these are the other rings, I'll just skip this. These are night birds, which are simply like handbands, more comfortable. And I'll come in there. Now, these are the other ones which actually you put under your mattress or pillows. And while you're moving at night, it actually picks up your heart rate. And that's a difficult technology, but it's again AI based. Machine learning will know what's your heart rate because they've done enough studies to see in which position your heart rate is varying. Uh, that's crazy, but it, it's true. And there are other, you know, put on finger sleep trackers. In the end, what are they going to tell you? I'm just going to discuss that. But the other ones are the wearables ones where you're sleeping, you're putting near the desk. Like Google Nest is there, it records your snoring, it tells you when you are apneic, when you are not. Uh, mind you, if you have a habit of babbling at night, this is not a good device because it records it and you can play it in the morning. So you might just give some names. Uh, Amazon does the same thing. So there's a whole gamut and there's, you, know, you can go to YouTube and just read the reviews. But these are non-intrusive, like they are on the side of this. Uh, bedside, they're playing some music, they're changing the lights. It's kind of nice feeling to have them. But some of them are actually intrusive. Like why things actually it can track your activity at night while you're sleeping. And you know, uh, that data is very important because bed is not, no, sleeping is not the only thing you do in the bed. So, so there's a whole big uh, privacy issues with these gadgets. What are they recording and how are they going to use it? Now let's come into this sleep time and these apps which monitor your sleep. They, they are wonderful in a sense. They will actually record your snoring. You can play it in the mornings and they will give you nudges at how are the other people sleeping, your sleep is good or not, so many things. And they connect with your watches. If you are wearing an Apple watch or any other watch, it connects and picks up the data and gives you a sleep cycle. So these apps actually function like a full-blown sleep lab if you have even a small heart rate watch. So one app can actually connect with 20 different gadgets across different companies. So they save a lot of money. So Snow Lab is the most extensively researched one. And it also tells you myofascial exercises and uh, other exercises, what you should be uh, doing because of your snoring problem. And a lot of my patients will actually use snow labs and they'll come and tell, you know, I lost weight and my snoring has reduced on snow lab. So it's the best app available in the market to quantify snoring. If that's a simple question, uh, what happened to my snoring, snow lab is the one which is dedicated. Some can be used with actually CPAP monitors like ResMed has my hair, uh, which actually tells uh, you know how your sleep was and it kind of gives the data and everything. Uh, and you can have a positional data. I slept more on my left side or right side. AV Gym is another myofacial exercise app which tells you how to do exercises throughout the day. And it's a very successful app and they've got trials which show People have reduced their AHI just by doing the exercises from this app and it gives you an instructional video and it kind of checks you on compliance. It gives you notifications throughout the day. Hey, why don't you spend two minutes in doing this exercise? That kind of sweet app and uh, I do use it in the practice. And there are other apps which connect with your uh, chewables. 
uh, with your phone which can do it and these are sleep position tracking if you put it in your pants and sleep it will tell you sleep position but a watch can do much more than that now I'll skip this but there's a good literature now that this is now one of the most uh, you know interesting a 38 billion market is there of wearables uh, and when you look at there are only four big companies Fitbit, Garmin, Apple and Polar and they are very accurate in what they sense everybody is trying to match up to them so these are headbands they have EEG electrodes on them uh, and when they use the electrodes this actually gives you a very accurate uh, measurement of the sleep stages Whoop is another uh, big brand uh, not available in India but works well so I'll skip this and yeah, somebody who has a bruxism in sleep, uh, there's also a sticker you can put it in and by Bluetooth it tells you how much uh, bruxism you're getting and in what stage of sleep you're getting in REM or NREM. So I'm just going to go through a basic watch which is like Garmin, what happens to it? It's beautiful in telling, this is like the standard AEG and when you compare, it tells you all the REM stages and it collaborates very good and Apple actually does better than anyone only the new one because Apple is a new entrant in the last two years it wasn't monitoring sleep for the last so many years now it has data of half the planet and because of the data the AI it just does its job much better so it tells me about like this is my watch it greets you it won't open unless you look at the sleep data it tells you how many hours you slept what stage of sleep you're sleeping REM, non REM what was your respiratory rate uh, and what stage of your sleep was this and then this gives a beautiful biometric called body battery it assumes that you are like a cell phone and you need to recharge yourself like a cell phone and if you have got a good sleep the body battery is high and you are ready for training and it gives you HRV data that you know all those things so Garmin actually simplified the sleep and it came with something called sleep score so on a usual night if my sleep is 78 and if I have a couple of beers it goes into very poor in 47 so it's that accurate that if you have a crappy day and you know why you know Garmin will actually fill it for you and this is what uh, one of the really brilliant guys have actually taken the effort of comparing all of them and this is called the Cohen's Kappa scale like the world's most successful Kappa scales have uh, uh, couples have a Kappa of 0.6 that is the agreement if you are one you are like completely agreeing your twins uh, and these watches agree with PSG up to 0.8 which is pretty good and when they started they were somewhere about 0.2 or 0.3 so what do I use I use this device for pulse oximetry and it's 7 to 8000 on Amazon available what it gives me is a pulse oximetry it gives me uh, the position of the kit very useful when you're planning a decanalization or you want to know the saturation of all night it's uploaded on the cloud so you can go ahead and visualize it uh, in your office while the patient is using the device uh, very useful i use it even in the hospital uh, sometimes i give it to the patient this is the future it's called sleep image what it does is a thing called cardiopulmonary coupling so hundreds of sleep devices gadgets which are there in the market they are compatible with this some of the variables are compatible with this so it can actually take raw data from anywhere and give you the whole sleep through AI computing so even the chart trial which was done 20 years back and you have the data of ECG there it will take up the DCG data and give you the HRV and the sleep stages of those children and people have used it now now uh, Alberta is doing it so if you if you are going to do a multi trial and people have a Philips device and one has a respite device and they're doing sleep studies, but if you have the raw data and you put it in sleep image, all of you will get a standardized reporting system and that's easy to do uh, trials in this. What are the downsides? Data privacy, I said, you know, it can track sexual activity, smoking, alcohol use, so many other things. Wake errors, you're taking a bath and shower and you're scrubbing yourself more than usual you know what I mean it will say you have walked 200 steps so uh, even though it will diagnose sleep apnea it can't be used for titration it's expensive there's a battery problem and they're intrusive 
you want to send somebody uh, say, say peacefully it will just vibrate and say notification this and that actually a funny story this guy was stuck in a traffic he took a bike taxi and his smartwatch said congratulations you are doing a very good cycling so so things can happen there definite advantages it's a whole community i have met more friends through my watch because you know what are the runners who do similar activity in the routes you go so you you it's a community based things so fitbit and garmin has a big community uh, it can be integrated on social media gives you insights on your health uh, it can be used to diagnose other problems as well diabetes cardiac arrhythmias actually apple is going to come with a glucose monitor now which is uh, with the light sensors uh, electrolytes pulmonary edema cardiac failures all these can be predicted very precisely with the watches that's that's the future then you have a whole commercial hsc devices which you can buy and give the patient at home uh, some of you are already using it at your link i'm just trying to put the features you take the picture and you know uh, read it yourself uh, nox is some uh, dr jeevan was putting nox in his studies uh, but most of these are available only to the doctors so they, they are not uh, you can't purchase it and the price is somewhere about 800 to 3000 dollars some of them are of not just 6000 but they can do a level 2 3 4 all types of studies which is more than enough <laughs> so sleep image is now the new kid on the block night all uh, yesterday our doctor was talking uh, but Alice one night and these are getting more and more portable. So watch pad is one which we use. So I just conclude, AI and technology will not replace us, but sleep practitioners using AI and wearable technology will replace the practitioners who are not using it. So we have to get on the bus. There is no option of us not using this. Technology is evolving. for us data is more important than technology so collect data because you can earn this much with your surgery but if you have the data it can fetch you at least 100 to 1000 times more uh, monitor your patients with variables and increase your understanding of failures collaborate and innovate we have everything here thank you so much